So if you're ever in the market to buy a house, eventually you're gonna run into one of these things, a home inspection report. It's a list of the home's perceived defects as compiled and documented by a home inspection professional. In my time as a carpenter in the field, I handled a lot of these reports. And I saw them cause a lot of headaches for home sellers and buyers because these reports are often very opaque, as is the home inspection industry itself. So today I'm gonna to take a little time to give a carpenter's perspective on home inspections. I'm going to try to shine a light into the corners of this growing and changing industry, and hopefully this will help you understand and deal with the inspection process in the future. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. So I'll say right off the bat that I fully support the use of home inspection reports. These reports help prospective home buyers understand the condition of a property they're considering purchasing. And for this reason, mortgage lenders will often require the buyer to get an inspection report before they buy a house. They wanna be sure the buyer knows exactly what they're getting into before they take on the biggest investment of their lives. That's a sound philosophy, and I would never argue against it. But the issue I ran into over the years is that these reports often raise more questions than they answer. And the home inspection industry itself has shifted in ways that have further clouded the waters. So here are a few fundamental truths that I think every home buyer should know. The first is that home inspectors these days are not necessarily construction experts. There was a time not long ago when nearly every home inspector you met had at one point in time worked in the construction field, meaning that they had personally engaged in the building of houses, either as a carpenter or a plumber or just a general laborer. That was the natural progression of things. Work in construction, eventually move on to inspection. But that's not necessarily the case anymore. Home inspection has become a massive industry of its own and many newer inspectors have actually never swung a hammer before. Instead, they've received their entire education through various training companies and accreditation services like the American Society of Home Inspectors. And most everything they know about houses comes from these inspection training programs. So, is this a big deal? Maybe so, maybe not. Many of these institutions are very thorough, and they have very rigorous certification processes that require hours of infield training. On top of that, about 30 states have some licensing requirements that inspectors have to qualify for every year. And that's all good. But the problem is that still doesn't teach a person much about how houses are actually built. And this confuses many potential home buyers because they mistakenly perceive inspectors as being home construction experts. But these days, there's really no need for an inspector to be a home construction expert because that's not their job. A home inspector actually only has a tiny scope of duties. And none of those duties have anything to do with fixing houses or even understanding the contracting industry. The only responsibility a home inspector has is identifying and documenting visible flaws on a home. That's it. Inspectors are required to be nothing more than a trained set of eyes that will enter a house you're looking to buy, examine the visible surfaces, and document visible problems. They won't peek or peer behind things. They won't take your house apart for research. They won't even suggest what can actually be done about the problems they find. And they won't do these things because they're not really allowed to. Home inspectors are bound in on all sides by liability and legal hazards. And when they're conducting an inspection, they'll almost always err on the side of caution, which can drastically limit your report. For instance, home inspectors will often request that the current homeowner move things away from walls, leave access doors unlocked, and make the house as navigable as possible. They do this because they aren't legally allowed to touch or move those things on their own. And on top of that, they don't want to. They're not furniture movers. Again, that's not their job. They're just supposed to move through a house freely and observe what can be seen mostly from a standing position. They will open electrical panels, sink cabinets, and possibly furnace panels. And to some extent, they'll climb into your crawl space and attic and look around. But this only goes so far. Oftentimes, they won't even force their way into really small enclosures and spaces. And as a result, things will often get missed on your report. Whether it's because visible damage is hidden behind a bunch of junk, or it's concealed in a very hard to reach corner, major things will sometimes fail to show up on an inspection report. I've come into home repair situations immediately after inspectors have passed through and found things that would boggle your mind. Major structural damage, massive wood rot, or even active leak situations. And in many of those cases, I knew that those things had been left off the report because the problem was in a place that the inspector either couldn't physically reach or because clutter prevented them from getting there. Again, it's only their job to go so far. Beyond that, they'll simply put in their report a line that reads, 
could not inspect northeast attic corner due to personal belongings in the way. And they'll leave it at that. This is why you always want to be sure to do two things. If you're having a report pulled on a house, ask your realtor or beg them to make sure that the house is empty or at least have the current owner get stuff out of the way. Pull furniture away from the walls and make sure all access doors are open and clear. If these things can't be insured, then consider delaying the inspection until they can be. Otherwise, your report could really suffer as a result. It's already hard enough to see all the corners of a house. Don't make it any harder for your inspector. In addition to this, try to find an inspector with a reputation for thoroughness. Some inspectors are better than others. I know a lot of good ones that will go the extra mile if they can. And even better, they'll often let you come along with them. Most home inspectors aren't opposed to doing the inspection with the client present. Really, if you think about it, this helps them prove that they're covering all their bases. And if for some reason they just cannot get into a spot, at least you'll know which corner of the house didn't get looked at. Maybe later you can then have a tradesperson take a peek back there while they're doing some other work. You want to try to identify as many big issues with the house as possible so that you can prioritize those in a negotiation. And that brings us to the third major point of this video and probably the most frustrating one. Not everything on a report is equal. The most frustrating thing for many home buyers and sellers is that the inspection report is often full of tiny extraneous flaws. We're talking little drywall cracks, pinhole gaps in caulking, dented walls. Much of a report gets padded with these things. Then whopping huge problems like faulty foundation piers and dangerous wiring might sort of get shoehorned in between. They'll essentially be given the same space as an aesthetic defect or sometimes less. This is one of my biggest issues with inspection reports. They don't prioritize or distinguish between major flaws and minor flaws. They all just come in as bullet points, one line item after another. And the crazy thing is that one of these line items might carry a $50 price tag and another might carry a $50,000 price tag. But they'll sit side by side in an inspection report as if they're equals. Again, this is not an inspector's fault. They're still technically doing their job. They're just documenting all the perceived flaws. They're not required to comment on all the implications of a problem, which is why they'll almost always use the blanket phrase in a report, have a qualified contractor inspect and repair. That's often all you'll get from them. In some cases, it may be because they want to stay far away from legal entanglements. And in other cases, it may be just because they simply don't know. They have no idea what would go into a repair because they've never repaired a house. They have no idea what it might cost or entail because they've never put together an estimate or had to keep a job on schedule. Whatever the case, they're covered because they're not technically required to talk about any of this stuff anyways. I only get frustrated when I see a report where every tiny drywall crack is documented, but the one seriously major structural flaw in the house gets overlooked. That's unacceptable. And this is why you want to be picky about inspectors. You want someone knowledgeable because you might be able to glean just a little more advice from them. And an inspector with construction experience will always be able to tell you a bit more, even if they have to cut it short somewhere for legal reasons. And if you're wondering where to go to actually find a good inspector, it can be a little tricky. Realtors will often have an inspector to recommend, and you can go that route. But you have to remember that a realtor in some cases might also just want the sale to go through. So I think the best thing to do is research inspectors in your area on your own and check websites. What you're looking for is that bio on their about page. What's their work background? Do they have a history in construction? Were they an active contractor at some point? That's what I trust most, just some construction experience. And I'm not saying that an inspector without construction experience can't do their job well. Again, it's just a observe and report occupation. But what a fledgling inspector can offer you will stop right there. They won't be capable of going any further because their knowledge base doesn't go any further. But if you make the rounds with an old construction veteran, you might glean all sorts of information about your new home. They'll have a greater knowledge of how houses are put together, how one component affects another. And if you pay attention to what they're telling you, you will get a stronger sense of what's serious and what's minor. And that's the most important thing you can know in any home buying situation. Anyways, that's my take on home inspections. It's kind of a hot button topic in construction, so please let me know what you think down in the comments. And if I find some good books and literature on the home buying process, I'll link them in the description below as well. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.